Uh, Com check on the handheld mic. Bueno, you're loud and clear. Loud and clear off the box, thanks. Continuing with some additional launch replays uh, from uh, cameras uh, strategically uh, located around the pad, the uh, launch pad itself and the pad perimeter. We're also expecting the uh, post-launch news conference uh, here shortly. A call to the uh, crew just a moment ago was to basically um, put a switch guard over a, a particular aero service servo amplifier. Um, one of four uh, that are uh, basically used uh, for uh, the guidance navigation control system as part of that system on the uh, orbiter. The uh, right at liftoff, um, ASA-1 as it's known, uh, saw, saw a uh, slightly different current draw. It's too soon to draw a conclusion as to what caused that, uh, that current draw, but uh, essentially that uh, breaker is still powered on and uh, the team wants that to remain powered on because uh, leaving it powered on also uh, protects the uh, isolation circuit uh, which uh, remains powered. Uh, so the crew is essentially just putting a, um, a uh, switch guard over that to make sure that it, if it inadvertently got bumped that it would remain in the same position.
Additionally, on the uh, main propulsion system, there was a transducer um, that malfunctioned, uh, so there were several calls going uphill uh, related to that. Uh, it, it had no effect on the operation of the, uh, of the main engines uh, during the eight and a half minute ride climb to orbit. Um, Atlantis is safely on orbit. The crew is uh, stepping through the uh, post-insertion uh, timeline and uh, headed toward uh, uh, opening the payload bay doors um, here in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so. We're ready to uh, head back down to Florida to the Kennedy Space Center, the launch site, uh, for the post-launch news conference that uh, upcoming next on NASA TV.